What's up everybody, my name is Brendan and this is Big Bird Be Creative. Welcome back everybody to another landscape photography video. Today we're going to be continuing on with what we talked about last week, doing a part two of landscape photography in the fall. And you know, last week we talked about more of settings, styles, tips and stuff like that for that portion of landscape photography. Today we're going to be continuing with a part two of the editing portion of fall landscape photography. So we're going to go over a couple different things, five different tips of things you should use when you're editing to get the most out of your fall photos and make them look the most fall like photos <laughs> or autumn if you prefer to use the term autumn if you guys didn't watch last week's video i suggest you do you could also check out at the very end of that i show you my doggos again it's been a little while so i decided to let you guys see them again you guys could check that out if you want to catch the first part of this so with all that said let's jump on over to the second part of this and jump on over to my computer all right so this is the photo that we're going to be using today for the examples for the five tips because it's also going to be another five tips here so 10 overall tips if you watched both this video and last week's video yeah so this is the one i took i took this early this morning and i say early i really mean about 50 minutes ago so as you can tell the sky is a little bit brighter but i kind of chose to do it this way because i wanted to have the leaves really shine because that's one of the fun things with fall photography. We talked about it a little bit last week where fall leaves, they're actually very transparent. They're very vibrant. There's a lot of light that goes through them. They're reflective. So that's kind of what I was going with with this. So the first thing that we're going to talk about when actually doing fall photography is obviously fall is a very warm month or not month, depending on where you are. It might just be a month, but warm color month. However, here where I live, it's also been really warm. I think yesterday was like 90 degrees, so that sucks. But um, So the first thing you want to do is warm up your photo. And you can do that using white balance or you could even do it manually. So when I actually shot this, I could actually show you guys the info. It's ISO 100, F4, 160th of a second. It doesn't tell you the white balance that I used up here, but I'll tell you it was the shady, shade one. Shady, shade, one of the two. Um, but yeah, that's what I used for this one. Now, you could go in and if you shoot raw, and you should always shoot raw, you could go in and even change it after. Okay, so this one says shade, so it might just be shade. I'm not sure. Um, but typically cloudy and shade are gonna be your warmer ones. So this is what cloudy looks like. It's a little bit cooler. There's a little bit more green. And then shade, there's a little bit of more warmth, but again, it's not as warm as it could be which we'll go into the later tips. And just to show you, this is... And just to show you, you could also go into um, the profile of the actual photo itself, and you could also change that a little bit too. It'll kind of all depend on what your camera is and the overall outcome. Um, but for the most part, I'm just going to use Luminar default and then we'll go from there. So the next tip, tip two, that I'm going to suggest you guys do for your fall landscape photography is to use split toning and more specifically split tone your shadows because that's where you're going to see the most drastic change, Dram dra drastic, dramatic change. <laughs> um, yeah, so kind of go with more of a, obviously a cooler or not cooler, a warmer kind of color. So. We're gonna go in here, kind of see what we get. That's way too yellow. So we're gonna warm this up a bit until we kind of get a little bit more of a warmer looking photo. And again, we could kind of change down here. And as you can see, the more saturation we put in, the more orange everything looks. So that's kind of what we want. We want a little bit more orange. They're going with this kind of burnt orange kind of color here. Split tone that for the shadows. Now, if your sky is looking a little bit off the coloring doesn't look quite right you could also go in and mess with the split toning of the highlights itself trying to make it look a little bit more blue of course that's also going to introduce it a little bit elsewhere too so be very careful with it don't use a lot of saturation with it if you do end up wanting to kind of change a little bit of what the sky is so if you hit this little eye icon it'll change this is what it was before this is what it is after. As you can tell, there's a lot more warmth, especially in the shadows, because that's what we were changing. And that's tip two, split tone your shadows. Now for number three, what we're gonna do is we're going to mess with the details, with the large details and small details more specifically. Because when you take photos of 
trees, when there's a lot of trees, your photo might look a little grungy because there's just a lot of detail there. So if you go in and lower the uh, large details or if you're using Photoshop, I'm using Luminar 3, if you're using Photoshop or any of the Adobe Suite, you just need to lower clarity. That's basically the same as lowering the large detail. And you don't need to go too crazy with it. Just kind of lower it a little bit as I, you know, lower it by about half. <laughs> But yeah, so that's all you really have to do. And then the small detail is gonna be things more like the texture of the rocks or something like that. So since we took out a lot of detail from the large, we're gonna bring in just a little bit with the small. Again, don't go too crazy. More specifically with the small, definitely don't go too crazy because then you'll reintroduce a lot more grunge. So just lower the large, raise up the small just a little bit. And that's all you need to do for that part. Now, the fourth tip I'm going to have for you to kind of go along with the detail enhancing that we were doing there with the lowering the large and raising the small just a little bit is actually to go back and play with the blacks because when you do the black point, because when you do that, you're going to give it more of a painterly effect. So if you go in and you raise the black just a little bit, get rid of a little bit of that shadow, you're actually going to kind of make it look a little bit more painterly, which basically just means look more like a painting rather than photograph because photographs can be a little bit grungier so just going to do that I'm also just going to go in and lower the highlights and the whites because the sky was really bright <laughs> so I'm just going to go in and do that you could also change the exposure and contrast too but that doesn't have anything to do with the tips we're talking about today but the last tip really big tip for fall landscape photography is the HSL sliders these are going to dramatically change your photographs. So first we're gonna start with hue because that's gonna change your overall colors. And then we could go in and change how much they're actually changing, what the saturation is, if they're brighter, darker, all that kind of stuff. But really start with the hue part. As you know, it's first in HSL, so it's probably pretty important. Um, but basically this is just gonna be changing the color profile. So you see here with orange, if we slide it to the right, that's making oranges more yellow, which eventually actually makes things look a lot more green. So we're gonna actually lower the orange a little bit and really bring out a lot of that orange. As you can see already, if I go ahead and take this down, it's a dramatic difference. There's a lot more orange there looking a lot more fall, which it did when that was there, but your cameras don't actually always capture things exactly as they are. So when you go in and make these, these little tweaks, makes them either look a little bit more natural or you could completely change the season. I've shown in past tutorials where I've taken a summer photo and make it look like a fall one. Um, but it's basically doing these same kind of sliders. Then we'll go in and change the, the yellow. Again, if you go yellow to the left, it's going to make the yellow look more orange, to the right more green. So we're just going to lower the yellow a little bit. Again, don't want to go too much because we still want to have a little bit of the green. I like the contrast in there so everything's not the same color. And then red, you could go to the right and I'll make it more orange. You go to the left, I'll make them a little bit more of a punchier red. So if we go there again, we'll go ahead and click that eye icon. This is what it was before we did any of the hue changes. This is after, again, looking a lot more like fall. Then we go in with the saturation. You kind of, again, you just kind of mess with the see what, just mess with them so you get kind of a look that you like, a color grade that you like. So let's say we want a lot more red. Go ahead and raise that up. We don't need too much more red. We want a little bit more orange. Punch that up again. You don't want too much. And yellow, we'll raise that up as well, just a little bit. And again, we click that eye icon before, after really seeing a lot of dramatic changes. And then luminance, again, like I said earlier, that's just gonna change how bright they are, how dark the colors are. So red, if we want the reds to be really dark, introduce a little bit more shadow, lower that, or you want the reds to pop more, make it go a little bit higher. I'm actually gonna deepen the reds a little bit more. Orange. I'm going to actually raise that up a little bit more because I want the orange to really pop because when you think of fall, at least for me, when I think of fall, I think of orange. Some people might think of more red, some might think of more yellow, kind of just all depends on the trees that you have around you. Um, I'm going to go in, do I want to, eh, I don't want to raise the yellow much because that's actually going to take out a little bit of the orange, specifically over here. And this was the main fall tree. Of course, there's a lot of fall going around it, but that was the main fall tree that really had the sun shining through it really liked it so that is what you have before that's with all the changes so without having any of the changes that we did this was the original stock photo very green even though there was a lot of orange and yellows and reds as you guys saw when we brought them out more 
but you can't really see them here. Making those few, five, few, yeah, five changes, you end up with this, which looks like a much more fall photo. So those are the five tips that I have for you guys today. Two of them are a little bit more of a small detail change, like the changing the black point and the details, the large details, softening those, and then the small details, raising that up just a little bit. Gonna give it more of a painterly effect, get rid of that grungy look that a lot of uh, landscape photography photos have, specifically if there's a lot of trees in it, like this one was today. And then the other three, split toning the shadows, Choosing or choosing changing the white balance and then that HSL sliders all are gonna really change the overall look of you guys' landscape photography, specifically for fall. And you could even use summer photos and make them look like fall using those same sliders. So if you guys have any questions on fall landscape photography, if you want any more tips or ideas, or if you guys even want to send your photos to me, you can send them to me on my social media links. I'll display them here and they're all gonna be linked down in the description box below. You guys can send them to me there, can okay, discuss what we think we could do to make them look more fall. If it's too much fall or you know whatever it is you guys have, you guys go ahead and message me either on my social media links or you could also message or comment down below um, and I can reach out to you guys there all anything you guys would like to do there and then two more things down in that description box below besides the social media links bigbearbecreative.com forward slash eco did I say dot com yes I did bigbearbecreative.com forward slash eco apparel you guys could find eco-friendly apparel obviously and oh, there's also stickers they're not exactly eco-friendly yet Hopefully I'll find a place that'll do eco-friendly stickers, but you guys can find eco-friendly apparel that has all my nature designs on them. There's long sleeves and hoodies available for fall for you guys if you actually are living in a place that actually gets cooler in the fall, unlike where I currently am now. Um, if not, there's also t-shirts and a portion of any purchases of long sleeves or hoodies, also tote bags, a portion of that is actually donated to an eco-conscious uh, environmental nonprofit. So that's another great way to for those people who are living in the areas that it's still 90 degrees in fall and are worried a little bit about global warming, purchasing eco-friendly might help you there a little bit. So you go ahead and check those out and then also bigbobbycreative.com forward slash prints where you guys were the dead deck where you guys could find my actual photography prints so you guys could purchase as well in frames or some posters, whatever it is you guys prefer. You can find all those down in the description box below. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you guys are bear pawing that like button down below. It really tells me you're enjoying it. It tells us YouTube that you're enjoying it. And another great way to tell YouTube that you're enjoying it is to subscribe. Typically, when I check my analytics, it's like 60% of you guys or more aren't subscribed. So I know you're watching, but you're not subscribed. Go ahead and hit that button down below. Let me know that you guys are enjoying this. So thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys have a great day. Be safe during this time and go be creative.